As many of you know, I've been very critical of Destiny 2 on this channel, and it's not that I think that it's a bad game, but it just doesn't pull me in anymore. And you can hear my full list of why that is in my Why I Prefer Destiny 1 video, and I go into a bit more detail there, but in this video, I'm just going to talk about if I plan on playing the Beyond Light expansion, despite my criticisms of Destiny 2 and my opinions on what we've seen of the expansion so far. So originally, I hadn't planned on playing Beyond Light. I planned on waiting a few months to see how things fared and maybe pick it up at a discount if the content seemed worth it based on the reviewers that I trust. But something kind of unexpected happened. Bungie will be releasing Beyond Light on Xbox Game Pass on November 10th. Now when I do play Destiny 2, it's on PC primarily, but I do have Xbox Game Pass, so because of that, I'll be playing Beyond Light on release day and going through all the content on my Xbox. It'll be rough readjusting to the frame rates and the load times, but I'll manage. It's honestly kind of funny because I remember talking to my friend about how we wouldn't be picking up Beyond Light this year and how we were hyped for other games like Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then just a few days later it was announced that Beyond Light would be on Game Pass, almost like Bungie heard us talking about how we weren't going to buy Beyond Light, so they included it in a service that we were already paying for. So somehow Bungie found a way to make sure I played Beyond Light. And despite my decision not to buy Beyond Light, I can't deny that I am excited to play through the new campaign at least. Bungie's campaigns are sometimes pretty rushed and a bit hit or miss, and sometimes they're just flat out bad, but they do have some redeeming qualities. Bungie just released a story trailer for Beyond Light, and it has genuinely interested me about Aramis and her purpose on Europa. The first thing I want to mention about Aramis is how badass she sounds. It's a strange kind of voice, but something about it is just so cool. She's rallying the Fallen together to try and rile them up to fight for what I assume is just overall power. The Fallen are done being pawns and now want to take charge, and it looks like Aramis is using the darkness to enhance their powers and build their strength. In the next scene, we see a little bit of Varix and hear some dialogue from him, and while he still sounds cool, he definitely sounds a little bit different than he does in Destiny 1. Maybe it's a new voice actor, or maybe they took his dialogue in a different direction, but he just sounds a little off compared to his previous appearances. Fallen houses must hunt, prowl, scavenge, defend. House Devils has Earth, House Winter has Venus, and now wolves claim Mars. Cabal will not be pleased. But as for the Varric story implications, it sounds like he's fearful of the darkness and what it will mean for the survival of his race, and it seems he's motivated to ensure that the fallen race survive, and he calls upon the Stranger for help. And that's where we, the Guardians, come in, answering a distress signal from the Stranger on Europa. We then see a few more shots of Europa, which honestly feels very inside Europa rather than out in the open plains of Europa, which is fine, but I did expect to be a little bit more out in the open space of Europa, so we see Varix being frozen by Aramis, Aramis then wielding the darkness and claiming nobody can withstand their newfound power. Which is likely why we Guardians eventually use the darkness ourselves to combat her. We can't defeat her with light, so we need to use the darkness. All in all, a very intriguing story trailer for the campaign, and at the very least, we can hope that it does pay off well. But only time will tell if the campaign story is good, and I truly do hope it is good. I think the best thing to come of this Xbox Game Pass deal with uh, Microsoft and Bungie is the fact that I'm able to play through Beyond Light and really test it out for myself, play through the entire campaign, get a taste of the endgame, and then determine if it's worth a purchase on my PC. And I really hope that it is, but we shall see, guys. I have my doubts, but we shall see. I'm definitely pretty excited to try out the new supers. Not only are they new supers, but a new element, and that's pretty cool. They do look really fun and have some definite unique abilities like the ice wall grenade, but some abilities do look very similar to other classes we already have, but just icy. I'm sure stasis will shake up the PvE landscape, but I am curious how stasis will affect PvP balance, and if it will be received well by the PvP community because it does look like it has a chance to definitely ruin PvP like other supers have done in the past during their introduction month, but overall, I'm sure people will be very happy to have some new toys to play with. Going back a bit to Europa, it definitely looks great, but I'm hoping we dive into more of Europa itself in caves and icy mountain ranges a bit, because every trailer so far showing Europa has been very indoors and inside of ships. 
Don't get me wrong, it looks pretty cool. I just hope it's not only ships and facilities. I really want to explore the open landscape. Aramis has been the main thing that's kept me at least somewhat interested in Beyond Light so far. Aramis is really shaping up to be an interesting villain, and thank god there's actually a villain this time, unlike the ominous pyramid and nightmares during Shadowkeep's campaign. That was just not interesting to me, personally. And it looks like Aramis has some genuine motives. She's sick of being cast aside and wants revenge on the Traveler and the Light for abandoning her and her people, and ultimately she probably wants revenge on us, because we stopped her from getting access to Siva. It really gives her character some depth that is understandable, but she also must be stopped, so it makes sense for us to head to Europa and try and stop her. It seems like Varix will be a pretty big part of the game's story and progression as well with his motives to preserve the fallen race. It appears he knew Aramis at one point and they share some dialogue together while he's being captured by her. And Aramis is likely upset that he's been trying to stop her from messing with the darkness because he believes it will end the fallen race, and she doesn't want him getting in her way. Really, the story is the main thing that's getting me to play Beyond Light. There's a lot of interesting plots for The Fallen, and personally, I love The Fallen and Destiny, and again, I hope this story pays off. I don't have many hopes that the endgame will do much for me, but I am 100% interested in playing through the narrative. If you made it this far into the video, guys, I just want to say thank you, and also let you know that we've got a sponsor for today's video. Rogue Energy. Rogue Energy was designed to replace unhealthy canned energy drinks, coffee, and even traditional pre-workouts. Rogue Energy is a sugar-free alternative to unhealthy canned energy drinks, coffee, and even traditional pre-workouts. Rogue Energy gives you the energy and focus you need and includes loads of vitamins and antioxidants. They have quite a few different flavor tubs to choose from and even have a starter kit with a few different flavors and a 25 ounce shaker. You can save 10% off your order by using code NOVEMBER10 at checkout and doing so greatly supports the channel, so make sure to follow the link in the description and use code NOVEMBER10. I really appreciate all the support on the channel lately and I really do appreciate if you guys do follow the link in the description and get yourself some rogue energy with my unique code. It definitely supports the channel and the future creation of more content for you guys. But I'm doing my best for you guys and I hope you enjoy the content and stick around for a little bit while longer. That's it for this video, be sure to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. And again, let me know in the comments your thoughts about Beyond Light so far. I'll see you all next time.